Hello and welcome to a first look at the latest version of Ubuntu Studio, which is Ubuntu Studio 21.10 Impish Injury. And this is actually a bit of a special release for Ubuntu Studio, as 21.10 will be their 30th release of their distribution, the 30th sort of version, upgrade, take it how you will, of this particular Linux distribution. And so I take my hat off to Ubuntu Studio. Well done for keeping it going for this long. And uh, here's to 30 more and hopefully more so than just that releases of the distribution to come. Now it's well known in the world of Ubuntu that a penultimate release before a long-term support so this will always be a 0.10, a October release, uh, so 21.10 being the penultimate before the next LTS, which is going to be 22.04. It tends to have a few little bits changed here and there. It's almost, some people almost consider it as like a beta release. And we know that on the mainline version of Ubuntu, there have been certain things like the Snap version of Firefox, being put in there as almost like a testing ground before it goes into the LTS version. And there's nothing quite as controversial in the Ubuntu Studio version. However, there's quite a few upgrades to key pieces of software, pieces of creative software that is, that are going to probably maybe stay the same, if not be a little bit more upgraded before the new LTS version, which should be looking at making it quite a strong release. So just quickly before we go into the updates, uh, to anyone who's not too familiar, um, Ubuntu Studio is a creative-centric and creative-specific version of the GNU slash Linux distribution Ubuntu. But this doesn't just mean that, you know, it's Ubuntu with a DAW and a paint program pre-installed. Oh, no, no, no. It's installed and everything is pre-configured. So um, it wouldn't just be, you know, here's your DAW, for example. It'll be here's your DAW as well as a load of back-end programs pre-configured, ready to have all the audio working, you know, the audio server and everything like that. Plus, here's a load of plugins, plus here's a load of software instruments and virtual instruments, all that kind of stuff. So it's really, really handy if you just want to install and go. And with that out of the way, here's one of the two release pages that they've put out. And the one thing that they're still talking about is suggesting to not do a direct upgrade from 20.04, the previous LTS. Uh, I tried this myself and it worked, but it also didn't. So I, I, I would tend to follow their advice and uh, not upgrade from there instead if you want to do an installation completely reinstall. In this particular release, as it's based on uh, KD Plasma, it's actually going to be built upon uh, Kubuntu, which is the just standard Ubuntu, but with the uh, KD Plasma desktop environment. So any updates they've had, for example, with Plasma, the environment actually going into version uh, 5.22.5, uh, you'll be receiving that update as well. Under audio, the studio controls, which I've spoken about before, being sort of like a amalgamation of all those extra settings and pre-configs and everything I mentioned before, sort of put together into one, well, as much as it can, into one control panel where you can control things like the jack server and MIDI and everything else like that. Um, that's had an upgrade, which is always really, really handy because it's, it's, a, it's a complex but very useful little tool. It takes a bit of time to actually get your head around, but once you do, it's, it's, it's very, very useful. Ardor is up to version 6.9. I do believe that it's 6.6 .6 on 21.04. I actually still have that version installed on my main computer. I'm going to upgrade after I've uploaded this video, just so I can like edit together and put together the video and upload it before having to do an upgrade, and then I'll do that a bit later. So Ardor is on version 6.9. Who knows? Maybe we'll get 7 by the next version. Probably not, but 6.9 uh, has a lot of bug fixes and other things and kind of some new features which will be very, very handy if it does end up being the candidate to go into the next LTS version. Ubuntu Studio have continued their crusade of uh, constantly updating OBS as it was a package that kind of had been a little bit left behind by kind of Ubuntu and Debian, I feel like, in general. Uh, something that was mm, upgraded sometimes. But eventually, Ubuntu Studio themselves added it to their version of the distribution. You could always download it, but they've added it into, like, the pre-install. And, uh, yeah, they've been doing a really good job of keeping it basically up to date with where it would be on things like Windows or... I, I dare not say Arch, but maybe Arch. I'm not sure I don't use Arch myself. So that's been upgraded, which is very good. That's actually, actually what I'm using to uh, record this video with right now. And then if we go over to the main release notes page, we will see a far more comprehensive list. So this is another thing on their website which you can find. Uh, it's actually the download page and everything else for Open Studio 20.10. But if we go down here, we have updates to audio being studio controls, Ardor's been updated, uh, Ray Session, Hydrogen, Carla, the Jack Mixer, and some LSP plugins have all been updated. 
under graphics, uh, Critter, or Krita, however it's pronounced, I never know, people always pronounce it differently, has been upgraded to version 4.4.8, Darktable upgraded to version 3.6.0, and Inkscape is up to version 1.1. Under publishing, Calibre, Calibri, however it's pronounced, is uh, upgraded to version 5.25, and Scribus is updated to version 1.5.7. Under video, as previously stated, OBS is now on 27.0.1 and uh, Cajun Live has been upgraded to a more recent version, which is 21.04.3. Although myself, when I do upgrade, I will be reinitializing the uh, Cajun Live PPA to give me the absolute most up up-to-date, stable version of the program, as I really do like to use the latest version. And then here's some multimedia packages. So this is kind of a little bit of everything else put together and some of the previous things. It's talking about Blender here, which is version 2.93.3. Uh, Kate and I, which we already said, Chris, which has already been said. Uh, GIMP is now version 2.10.24. Very, very useful piece of software. It's what I use to make my thumbnails and graphics and other things. It's basically the free and open source version of Photoshop. The only other thing at the end here is my paint, which is version 2.0.1. Just before we have a look at some of the other installed packages, just two little things I want to say about the whole look of the desktop. Uh, firstly, one thing that's disappointed me a little bit is that we have the same, or at least it looks basically the same, uh, desktop background, desktop wallpaper that I think has been there since version 20.04. And it's nice, but I think for a creative-centric distribution, it's a real letdown, a real shame that the non-creative-centric versions are you know creating new desktop backgrounds and are changing them every every release but here it just seems to be using the same one over and over again there are some of the previous ones that i've really really liked like ubuntu studios version of like disco dingo for example i actually still have that saved as one of my desktops that i have on like a rotation but with these ones i'm i'm, I'm not feeling too inspired and I'm, i know they can probably do better than it so it'd be nice to see something looking a little bit nicer to be honest and something a little bit fresh hopefully that'll be uh, something they definitely add in for the next version because to go two LTSs in a row of the same background like you know it doesn't change the functionality or anything but like I said for a creative centric distribution it's a bit of a shame to not. I do feel that the theme looks a bit different though. It looks a bit darker like I swear that this was a little bit of a lighter grey before and I thought this was a bit of a grey before but it's black this time I think it looks a lot sleeker and a lot nicer. Now in previous first look videos I've done before I've actually gone through every single category and gone through every single app, but I'm going to sort of, I'm going to breeze through it a little bit more this time. Quickly talking about the categories, Ubuntu Studio actually make their own categories that they add in, uh, specific to the normal ones that like get made by, you know, Ubuntu and then the uh, the desktop environment maintainers. They have a audio production, a graphic design, and a video production segment of their own, and then audio production is even subcategories. But we're just going to go on to all applications, we're just going to run through a few important ones here. Um, a lot of these that I'm not going to talk about are sort of secondary things. They're things like um, virtual instruments and VST plugins, audio plugins, stuff like that. Stuff which you'll be using if you want to do like the main bulk of audio work, but you can just see it as it goes and be like, oh yeah, I can use that or I couldn't use that. But we're going to look at the main programs here. Uh, or there are things like system utilities like Arc here, which is an archiving tool. Uh, think WinRAR if you're coming from Windows doesn't really need to be said. Stuff like this just gets built into Linux distributions all the time and it's just something you'll just have as a tool. No need for me to really bring it up. So firstly we have Ardor, and I see it's the latest version which is Ardor 6.7. Audacity, I know there's a little bit of a controversy with Audacity a little while ago. I'm not sure if the things that people don't like have been added into this version or not. I don't tend to use it very often, I'll be honest. We have Blender, we have a Calibre, Calibri, how it's pronounced. The Carla plugin suite which has been updated again, I do believe. Scroll down, we have things like Darktable, which is for editing pictures, I believe. DVD-NG, this is like a DVD burner, basically. Digicam, which they made a big deal about uh, before. It's photo management software, uh, good if you're a photographer who takes a whole load of pictures and just don't, wants to dump them on the computer and start going at them from there. And uh, not anything I use too often. Discover, just in case you're not too familiar with KD Plasma, this is like the GNOME software center, but the KDE version. Eliza, which is something nice that I've mentioned before, for a long time Ubuntu Studio didn't have like a pure music player. It had things like VLC and stuff that can play music, but it never had like a pure music player. But this was something that got fixed when they actually switched from XFCE to KDE Plasma. Uh, so it's nice having one there. 
Now, I said I wouldn't talk much about utility programs here, but stuff like the NV4 control here and the FFADO, uh, these are things to help you with specific hardware you might have, such as a Firewire audio mixer, for example. So once again, like I said, if you want to be able to just install something and go, this tries to be as plug and play as possible, even with some older or more exotic hardware. Firefox is the main web browser here, my personal favorite web browser. And I'm gonna pause here quickly because normally a web browser is pretty standard feature, but this is something worth talking about. I know that in the mainline standard straight from canonical GNOME version of Ubuntu, that this has been swapped to being a snap pack. Uh, I checked it on here. It seems to be the, uh, you know, the .deb, the one you'd get from apt rather than the uh, snap package, at least for now. So if like me, you tend to just like to use the standard one that comes installed. Uh, this is still that, at least for the time being, you don't have the annoyingly slow load times of Snap. Although I do hope that's going to be something they'll fix in the future. And I think it's something that they will have to fix in the future. Uh, I'm not as skeptical or distrusting towards Snap's controversial opinion. I actually prefer Snap packages to flat packs. I find them a little bit easier to deal with. However, I then also tend to prefer .deb over snap but hopefully if they can just make it a bit faster that should be fine for the future there are free font viewers here which is a bit unnecessary but one quick thing that always is worth mentioning something you never normally see is actually that ubuntu studio comes with a load of fonts the gnu image manipulation program or gimp for short which is the thing i said that's like a free and open source alternative to things like photoshop guitarix which is a virtual amp some drum machines and some other virtual instruments inkscape which is a vector graphics editing program. K Color Chooser, which I believe is just the uh, KDE slash cute version of uh, G Picker. Basically, point the cursor over any pixel on the screen, it'll give you the color code for it. Very, very handy. Cajun Live, which is a really good video, video editor. It's actually the video editor I use to edit all of the videos on my channel, including this one. Critter, another, well, it's called itself a digital painting program, but I have heard people refer to it as another Photoshop alternative. The full LibreOffice suite, which is the free and open source alternative to things like the uh, Microsoft Office suite. I think it's just as good, to be honest, and I use both as I will a lot of the time uh, dual boot between Linux and Windows, and I, I think it just, I, th I don't think it tends to miss a step. I think it's pretty good, actually. Uh, I quite like it. I'm not sure I'll ever bother really paying for an Office suite again because LibreOffice exists, and I'm quite happy to use that going forward now. MuseScore, and it's uh, MuseScore 3, so it's one of the current versions, which is a musical notation and score creator and editor. Very, 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 very handy, because you can also do things like opening up guitar profiles. Very, very handy if you find those on ultimateguitar.com. But you can also do things like compose music into this and then export it as MIDI and then put that into like a DAW or something else and attach like a virtual instrument or a synthesizer to it and then get it to play the MIDI that you've actually composed on notation. As uh, for someone like me, I would actually rather notate out the music rather than trying to sequence it properly with like a MIDI sequencer. To me, notation just works a bit better. I basically, I'm, I'm more familiar with it and I use it a lot more, so I'd rather stick to that. But that's something it can do if you need it to. My paint, which got a mention in the release page, so I'll bring it up here. It's a paint program. I've never really used it myself. OBS Studio, streaming and screen recording software. It's actually what I'm filming this on right now. Ocular, in my personal opinion, the best PDF uh, viewer you can you can ever get. Some pixel art editing uh, software and some more writing software. I don't tend to use it very often, but I know that they're quite popular for people who need like more intricate writing software or for artists to like to use pixel art, but it's nothing I tend to do myself. A whole load of jack utilities and also a Q tractor, which is it, it calls itself a multi-track sequencer, but it is actually another DAW to go alongside things like Ardor. I've just noticed there's no LMMS, which is Kind of shocking, actually, because that's another very, very popular sort of DAW slash music sequencer that you get on Linux. I wonder why they've removed that. Guitar Rack, another guitar effects processor, and Rapid Photo Downloader, something else which is very, very useful if you're taking loads of photos off, like, a digital camera, especially if it's on something like an SD card. Scribus, which just says page layout development. I do believe this is for how you'd want a book to be printed and presented where it actually becomes, like, a physical thing rather than just, you know, an online document, for example. The Thunderbird Mail Client. And the final thing of note here is the, the classic VLC media player. So not a particularly radical new release. However, just as an update to, you know, keep everything updated, keep security patches coming in, getting a new kernel in case you need like really, really up-to-date hardware, or if you just want to have the software you use, things like our door being the latest version, this is a really, really handy little update. I've not seen anything particularly bad about it but then again nothing too exciting but that said some people like a computer when you can just load it and it has what you need and then it gets out of the way 
and uh, I'm pretty happy with this. And I'm looking forward to upgrading my own version of the distribution. I'm actually running Ubuntu Studio as a converted Zubuntu. There's a thing you can download, the Ubuntu Studio installer, where you can actually convert other versions of Ubuntu. Say, for example, you wanted to use the Mate desktop environment. You'd install Ubuntu Mate, and then you'd install the Ubuntu Studio installer on top of it and convert it into Ubuntu Studio, but with that particular desktop environment. So mine is Ubuntu Studio with the XFCE environment, which used to be the main one that, that Ubuntu Studio used to use. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to upgrading my version to 21.10 a little bit later. And uh, yeah, I'll be doing another video in about six months time of how I think the distribution has gone, how I think this version has been to use, and then we'll be on to 22.04, the next LTS version. I very much look forward to that. And that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. And I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.